The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how is it going? And welcome to the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It is Thursday, July 25th, and so happy for you joining us. We are ready to start another day together with the Lord. So subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on on Patreon. So today we have an exciting podcast for you. We have sermons in the sky, Q&A Thursday word study, and of course commentaries, updates, and news on what is happening around the world in this history today. Whew. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Yes, it is Thursday. We're getting into the tail end of the week. Hope you guys enjoyed your Wednesday service. I still haven't heard it yet. I'll be listening to it a little bit or a few hours later. Uh, oh, today is Q&A Thursday. If you have any questions or, any, or anything, just go ahead, DM me, or you can write in the comment section, and I'll definitely go over that question for uh, this week or next week. And we do have it every week, so make sure you send those questions in. Uh, and if you haven't yet for today's video, please leave a like and comment to build our community. I'm just super happy every day for everyone joining us uh, on the Morning Star Drive. So let's get up and support each other each and every day. So this week's Sunday message title is what? Open the eyes of perception and look. All right. Open the eyes of perception and look. And I hope that um, there's a lot of things that happened this week to help you change your perceptions that are wrong or change your negative perceptions into something more positive, especially when it comes to this history. Uh, what is happening in this history, even though it may look bleak or sometimes things are really bad, uh, I hope that we can change our perception, understand that sometimes, uh, as the message said, we may think we're being judged or we may think it's like some punishment for a sin, but it's more because uh, we are setting conditions, right? And of course, not saying everything, but we need to be able to discern really well in that area too. So for me, it is Thursday uh, in just a, a couple of hours. Uh, my third leg of this uh, trip of visitors will be done. So my, my friends from Korea are heading off to Bali and uh, I will be... Uh, <laughs> I think I told you guys this yesterday. I'll be dropping them off at the airport pretty soon and picking up someone at the airport right after. So it's it's pretty crazy. And uh, the good thing about uh, these friends that are here right now from Korea is they don't want to do any sightseeing. They straight up want to just eat good food. So we're just checking out new cafes and and places that they found on the internet that Koreans say are really good and stuff like that too. So... Uh, I'm very thankful that there's no sightseeing. I am not going up 272 steps up to the Batu Caves and stuff like that too. And, you know, for those of you guys out there who are wanting to come to Malaysia and uh, don't, don't, think that, um, don't, don't think that it's a burden. Like, oh, you know, Pastor Scott doesn't want to do any of those things. Uh, I'm just telling you guys that, uh, you know, I've been to it so many times that... Uh, for myself, sometimes I just prefer to be in the car while everyone else goes up, up, up the steps, just because I've done it so many times. However, you know, if there's some really, really good friends too, I'll, I'll just take them up there too. And in all honesty, <laughs> it's actually not that bad. You know, it's just that uh, you have to find new ways to make it exciting again. And I think that I think you know what I actually, I actually think one of the cool things of going with different people is that you'll, it's like a new experience every time you go with a different person too. So I, I think that is something that, uh, that, uh, I, uh, uh, that I enjoy too. Because, you know, I'm a very, very social person. And if anything, you know, when you watch my uh, like Instagram and stuff, and I take pictures of those places I go to, a lot of it I'm doing it just for fun. You know, like I make those like tired faces and stuff like that too, just to show that like, oh, I've been here so many times kind of thing. But I don't mind it. I, I really don't. So I would welcome more and more people. I don't know how long I'll be in Malaysia. Well, this trip I'll be leaving on August 15th, which is like Independence Day over there in Korea. But uh, yeah. If you are wanting to come, I would say come sooner than later because I don't know how long I'll be here. Like, who knows? Who knows? Only God knows, right? So I know that I'm going to the States uh, for a couple of weeks, and that's going to, you know, who knows? I can have just an amazing experience that God leads me to go over there. So it's really, really different. But yeah, I'm having a very, very relaxing time. Super happy right now. Uh, and I think the biggest thing that I enjoy 
Like, I don't really enjoy the sightseeing places. However, I enjoy the good human interaction. That's what I really enjoy, right? Because, you know, remember I, I was telling you guys in the study showing that if you want to live a longer and healthier life, uh, the most important thing is going to be how good of the relationships that you have, right? That, that's going to be the single most uh, important variable when it comes to living a, a longer and healthier life. It's better than stopping smoking. It's better than exercising is good, healthy relationships. So I think that's something that we really have to understand is we are people that are created in God's image and likeness, and God is the God of love. And part of love is the conversation with people that you love, right? So, yeah. Yeah, so if you guys want to come, go ahead and come. And uh, I would say to you guys, just check to see if uh, it's not overlapping with another schedule. I am just happy and thankful that all the schedules now, none of them overlap. That it's basically one coming after the other back to back to back. And that's far better than having them overlap. So please let me know because when it comes to scheduling, it's basically whoever calls me first gets to come. Like calls me first will take that schedule kind of thing, right? Uh, oh, you know what? One thing that I really, I thought was probably the best thing about these three groups that have come, I've met four, five people, five people that I've never met before, like brand new, whether member or non-member. Uh, and uh, for me, I I'm thankful that I can meet and make new contacts too, regardless if they're members or non-members. Because, you know, when it comes to human interaction or just being human, it's just... Some people click and some people don't. It's just reality of it, right? Uh, I would say invest more into providence relationships because one thing Sunseem did say was, you know, we're going to see each other forever and ever, even in the Golden City, right? And the people who are not saved are not going to the Golden City. We're not, uh, if they're not saved, like say even if they're, like, if, they're, if they're not even Christian, they're not saved, not going to heaven at all, you won't even remember them. And this includes uh, your own family. And I, that kind of shocked me, right? Because he says, like, yeah, think about it. Um, your life on this earth will eventually become like a dream. And many will just forget. And what does that mean? Well, if you think about it really deeply, how many of us remember all of our dreams in detail? Even though we just had it in the morning, by the afternoon, we've forgotten the dream. Because as time passes by, what happens? As time passes and more and more time passes, uh, what's going to happen is that memory becomes more and more distant and we fe forget, right? So imagine this. When you die, you go into the spiritual world and how long do you live there for? Forever. So let's just say 10 days pass. You're still going to remember your... You might remember that you had a dream, right? Two weeks. Two months. Two years. 200 years. So even think about this. Uh, I'm 45 years old right now. I can't remember my dreams from even 10 years ago. I can't remember them from 20 years ago. Imagine if 2,000, 2 million years pass. Do you think you're going to remember everything that happened in this physical realm? And the answer is you're not, right? So remember, and this, one of the reasons why Sunsim answered this question is because uh, someone was asking is... Um, if you, uh, well, the question was, if you don't evangelize your parents and they don't get saved, even though you're in heaven, wouldn't you still be sad because your, your mom or your dad didn't make it to heaven? Do you know what I mean? Like, they're like, let's just say they're in the domain of death. Like, if you honestly think about that, wouldn't you be in heaven feeling so much pain? And that was the answer Sunsim gave is like, when people are not saved, you will, you'll never see them again forever. And as more and more time passes, the more and more you're gonna forget, it's gonna be like a dream. And remember this, in the spiritual world, time passes in a different way where a day is like a thousand years, right? So imagine a thousand years passes, would you remember anything from a thousand years ago? And the answer is no. So I, I, I would say, that's why I would say, invest your relationships more with the people that are saved. I would, right? Because these are the ones you'll remember forever, okay? So, yeah. You want to hear something kind of funny? 
Well, actually, I, I had this interesting realization through gambling. I know, I know. I, I told you before, I was, I was, you know, with the non-members. We, they can't speak English. I can't speak Chinese, but we could speak through cards, like me and two other guys, right? And uh, we're playing games, and we gambled like three cents a card. So, guys, it's it's not a big deal. It's three cents, okay? Uh, and I was winning the first two, like the first two times we played, I was winning. I was up like, I think like ten dollars, something like that. It was, it, was, it was it was something so small. And then we doubled the ante to six cents, <laughs> right? Oh, by the way, you guys hear a lot of the background noise, right? I'm actually in uh, the city, like. Uh, the Kuala Lumpur City Center. I'm in the Pavilion Shopping Center right now at a cafe doing this, uh, doing this podcast. So, uh, yeah, if it's noise in the background, please forgive me. And I'm pretty sure that most of you will be used to this sound. And actually, I think this sound is a little bit therapeutic at the same time. But either way, so I just want to let you know why I have a lot of uh, background sound here. But uh, we, we, we gambled six cents a card on the last day, right? So we met on the last day before I took them to uh, the airport. And uh, it was really interesting, very interesting. Because the first, I would say the first 15 games, I was losing bad. So remember, I was up like 10 bucks, right? But this day, I was down 30. And remember, it's only six cents a card. Yeah, I was down $30. I was like, oh my gosh. Well, yeah, $30, right? And I was like, whoa, you know, God, why am I losing like this? And then I thought to myself, because of this week's message, maybe, you know, well, not this week's message. No, at first I was thinking, maybe God is giving these two businessmen grace, right? God is giving them grace, so, you know, we'll be even more, they'll like me even more because they're winning and they're in a better mood, right? But then, for some reason, the message came to my mind, and I, in my head, all of a sudden, I'm like, no way. I can't, I can't, I can't end like this. I just got to stay positive. Because this week's message is about, uh, you know, there might be suffering to set conditions in the beginning, but in the end, God will win, right? In the end, right? So I'm like, okay. So this is just, you know, all this loss is just setting a condition for something greater in the future. And um, it was getting really late because, you know, the next day I had to take them to the airport in the morning. So I was like, you know what? They, they said to me, since you're losing, you can choose how many games you have left. And think about it. I'm down a lot, right? So I was just like, let's do five games. And they look at me like, I'm crazy, like, five games? Are you, are you okay? Like, they're like going, you know how much you're losing? I was like, yeah, 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 I know how much I'm losing. Let's go five games. And they're like, all right. So I just stayed calm. And uh, it was so weird. I was losing the biggest by far, right? And then the last five games... As crazy as this sounds, I went from minus 30 to plus 50. Tell me that's crazy. I went minus 30 to plus 50. And it was crazy amazing. And I was kind of even moved by it. But of course, in my face, you know, I don't want to, you know, gloat in front of these people. I just won money off of whatever it was. But it was kind of like in my head, I was like, God, what God was telling me is it is the attitude that is necessary, the mindset right? Being the worst player, but still having the confidence that you're going to win, you know? And in the last five games, I won really, really, really big. And well, I I think there was a gradual push even before that, but I was still down a lot of money. And then at the last five games, I just went up like crazy. And it it started to make me think about this history too, right? There are times when we look like we are last or we are last and we feel last and we're moving the slowest out of everyone and we even feel like like there's no hope. You know what I mean? Like when you're down that much, you might think there's no hope. And, you know, at those times, we probably even think to ourselves, like complain to God, like, God, why are we losing? God, why is it like this? Or we'll say, you know, God, shouldn't we be doing better? God, how come you gave me such bad cards? Or how come we're dealt such a bad hand, right? And it's so easy to get discouraged, like really easy to get discouraged. But through this small experience, like, it's a, you know, think about it, small experience. We didn't really lose or gain that much because... Uh, it's just basically, uh, what do you call it? You know, we're playing for three cents and six cents. It's nothing big. But because even though it was so small, but, you know, there's the pride on the line. You know, as a, as a competitive guy, I don't want to lose, right? So 
Uh, but through this small experience, I was honestly <laughs> able to feel God's love even more deeply on a large, like thinking about it from a large scale of providence itself, right? Now, guys, I am not telling you to go out and gamble and gain realizations from God. But, you know, the, situ the, the experience I had was from gambling or just playing cards with friends. And I was able to realize something much bigger from it. And I think that's something we can take away from is, you know, even if we're losing, we still have to have that confidence and that mindset that God is with us, that anything can happen, even when it comes to the last five games, right? So, you know, it was small money. It was, it was just mainly for fun, but it was enough to feel the excitement and feel the fear at the same time. So I, I, I really, really uh, gained a lot from that experience. Of course, I'm not going to be gambling any higher than that or gambling very often, but it felt like Chinese New Year to me because Chinese New Year, we always gamble and stuff like that too. But either way, uh, you know, oh, uh, something interesting. I, you know, when, when I have conversations with leaders, uh, there is one thing that I talked about with one leader and I thought it was quite interesting and it was about the rules in Providence what are the rules right and it, it was interesting because we're talking about how do we enforce or how do we teach people the rules properly okay and first thing the first thing I want you know we, we, we discussed is well you know the rules in this history are pretty clear like with the do's and the don'ts right they're pretty clear and even though there, it's pretty clear, there are some rules that are greater than the others. Absolutely, right? Some are super important and some are not as important, right? And if I give you an example, like super important is the fall, obviously, right? Opposite sex, uh, like, like those, you know, those types of problems. And then, this, and then something that's not very huge would be like, eating unhealthy. Remember th that time was like, don't eat ramen, don't eat uh, soda or Coke or whatever it is. Don't eat, what else was there? Don't wear black, right? Yeah, there, there's a bunch of these other rules like this. And we all understand that those, those rules are not equal, right? We can't put those types of rules, those two different types of rules in the same category. They're just so different because we know that one affects salvation and the other doesn't. Right? Like, just because you wear black, does that mean you're not saved? Obviously not. Right? Uh, but in the end, I think the one thing as, you know, for me growing up as growing in leadership, the one thing that I, it took me a long time to figure out is the concept, the true concept of free will. The true concept of it. Now, what does that mean? Because, you know, I'm going to tell you this. When, as a leader, when I did not understand free will, then I, I, ha I, I, I feel like I have to control people, you know? We'll try to control the situation, control everyone, be a little bit more strict, right? And we're going to make sure that, you know, we're going to be really stringent on the rules and we'll get upset when they break the rules and this and that. And that's when I didn't really understand the concept of free will. But as we grow up, what do we realize? We realize when you understand free will, the understanding is, number one is you cannot control people. And number two is, it is up to that person's responsibility, right? And the caveat is, the younger you are, the more guidance they need, and the older you are, the less they need, right? Because it has to do with you're an adult, so you can make your own decisions kind of thing, right? Can we be disappointed as a, you know, when I was leading? Can we? Of course I was disappointed. Of course, you know, I want to help people. But the reality is, can we stop people from doing what they want? And the answer is you can't. You just can't. It's, it's, it's part of free will. And the one thing I realized going through leadership over 21 years is the stricter you become, the more people will not listen, right? And if, if put it this way, if you're someone who's super strict with providence and such, you'll see that you'll have a very, very small group of people that are willing to do it because those people are strict with themselves too, so they like that lifestyle, but the vast majority are not gonna just be like following it all the time. You know what I mean? And 
it, it's, it, it's really, really interesting because it's so counterintuitive. The counterintuitive way, like the best way to, as, just take it how I'm saying it, the best way to control people is by giving them freedom. Tell me that's counterintuitive. That's so weird, isn't it? The stricter you are, the more people won't listen. The more freedom you give, the more people will listen. Tell me that's weird. And someone will say to me like, well, if you give too much freedom, then people just do whatever they want. And my, my, my answer to you would be is, those who want to follow, you're going to follow. And those who don't want to follow, they might follow only in front of you, but behind the scenes, they'll do whatever they want. You know what I mean? And it sounds so counterintuitive that to, to get people to follow or to get people to listen, you have to give them more freedom and become less strict, right? And we think to ourselves that we need to be stricter so people make less mistakes. But the answer is, when it comes to just regular mistakes in life, people need to be given the chance to make the mistake so they can realize in reality that it's wrong. It's far better than putting a bubble around them and controlling every aspect of their life because they're going to hate it. And I'll probably say there's going to be like an age, the age where it starts to, uh, you start to really start, start wanting to not be told what to do. I would say it's from 17 to 19. Somewhere around there, 17, 19, you you're not gonna have any. You, you don't want any. You don't want anyone to tell you what to do with your life, right? And we, as we were talking, we're like, yeah, it's true. The more loose you are, loose, not being loose, but giving freedom, like a controlled freedom, uh, allow people to make their own choices, allow people just to understand their own choices, and. I would find this quite interesting. Remember I told you when um, I met some BFs that came from other countries and such? They were telling, like one of the things that they realized was the exact same thing. And I think we understand this when it comes to being children and looking at our parents, right? But parents also realize this later. So like I said, when I, especially when I talked to some BFs, what they told me was the more you try to control and make your children come to Providence, the more they will reject. And some parents will even regret the way they parented, like trying to force them into Providence or make them do stuff. And when you think about it that way, I don't think it's any different than the way we lead, right? Even the way we lead, I don't think it's any different. And, you know, I was saying this before too is, yeah, the younger the, younger the, the member is, the more guidance they need. Doesn't mean to be strict. It means guidance, right? Guidance is different than strictness. And the older they get, the, the more they have to live their own life and they make their own choices. You can't make choices for the members. They have to do it on their own. They're going to go through the ups and downs. And uh, Sunseem said this before too is what's more important than making sure they never make a mistake is making sure the relationship is good. Because if you keep trying to make them do things, make people, members, or children do things, the more they resent you, if they don't want to do it, right? They'll resent you, and the relationship will break, and they basically stop coming to you when they have problems and such. So what's far better? It's far better for someone to have a great relationship with their children, and they'll always come to you, which means they'll always have a chance in this history. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, I, I think we, in our minds, we may be thinking a little bit too short term, right? We are. But like I said, as someone gets older and older, where does the responsibility lie? Does it lie with the leader? No, as you get older and older, the responsibility lies with that person because salvation, going to the domain of death or life has nothing to do with someone else. It's only about you. It's your choices that you make, right? You're responsible for your own life. And that's kind of where understanding free will comes in. People are accountable for their own life and you cannot control it. And if you think that children are difficult, children are not difficult because you, you realize and recognize that they need help and that, you know, if you start to treat an adult like a child, then you're going to face even greater difficulty. That's a guarantee. 
because at that point, an adult is reasonable and rational. An adult will look at you and say, why the heck are you talking to me like this? And some of them will just be so fed up, they won't even, they'll stop talking to you altogether because they just think it's not worth it or you're not listening, right? And that's why I would say that, uh, you know, leadership, as, you know, even as I've been doing it for 20 years, man, it's not an easy thing. And I would say that leaders are probably more used to dealing with younger members than older members. And it's, it's true because we mainly deal with campus and SS, right? And sometimes when we deal only with the younger groups, sometimes we begin to treat the older people like their children too. So, yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting because, you know, even for me, whenever I talk to other leaders or ex, not ex-leaders, but, you know, other leaders and people who've been in province for a long time, we always talk about our mistakes and what we did wrong and how important leadership is. And how important is it? Sunseem says that uh, the followers will go the same direction as the leader. It's that big. The followers rapture is determined by their head leaders. That's how huge it is, right? So we see that leaders play such a huge role in the church. And I, I think it shouldn't be taken uh, as such a small thing, right? Now, what is it? what do I mean when I say people shouldn't take it as such a small thing? It means that you know when you run full-time Providence, sometimes we just think to ourselves that head leader is the natural next step for us. And I think that's looking at it too lightly. Oh, I'm inspired. I want to be a head leader. It's like, no, no. Like, just because it's the next step? No. It should be, the thought process of being a head leader should be like, this is one of the most important roles in the church. And how I lead will determine where this church goes and where these members go. This is not a small thing it must be taken seriously. I must be fully prepared for this. And that's why, you know, we have to think about not just when it comes to ourselves going into a leadership position, but also those who are putting people's names up should also think about it very carefully and deeply because it's going to alter the entire country, right? And what I'm saying here is it's not a fault of one side or the other. It's just as a country, as a as a Providence Nation Church or whatever it is together we need to be thinking together and working together and uh, you know this is something I think all of us have to do all of us working together moving towards a better history and as long as it remains this way uh, the way that it is right now I think it's going to be very difficult to see significant changes uh, just because we're kind of just going with the flow and no one's really having like massive discussions about this either. And part of it is, especially the smaller countries is, this is understandable, we just don't have enough people. We don't even have enough people lined up to become leaders for the next, you know, we don't have a pipeline of leaders and such too. So that is something that I do think we have to think about also. So, uh, like, you know, one thing that I will look at myself, because I know myself, I'm, I'm pretty self-aware of my pros and my cons, right? And, some people ask, like, why don't you do head leading again? And I just don't see that as the right position for me. I think it'll eventually, me going to head leading will eventually not just hurt others, but hurt myself. I just can't think about myself. Like when it comes to certain positions, I need to think about my capabilities, what I'm good at, and what I can do to help this history the best. So, you know, and I would say one of the big things that stopped me from becoming a good leader was not understanding free the concept of free will. That was something I thought was a, a big part of me not leading well, is when I don't understand that well, I think I can control it, but I can't, right? You know, like, you know, sometimes, you know, embarrassingly, I'd be like, hey, come on, we got to do this because Sunseem says so. Why aren't you doing this? Why did you do that kind of thing? But now I kind of see it like, uh, yeah, I understand. We're all on a different path. We all have different speeds. So let's try our best to do this together. Hey, we're not going to be perfect. We're not going to be right, but we're on our way. We're in progress. And what matters is not that you did it perfect right now, but it's about us doing it together through the ups and downs, like a true loving relationship. Up or down, we're going to make it through together. And I think that is essentially what, what love actually is right? 
So when we learn about love or patience, kindness, and everything that love is, like think about in your life, when you think about what true love is, when it comes to actually loving, we know it's not easy. Because when you love, one of the hardest parts about when you love someone, you don't really think properly. But one of the things that love does is allows people to grow. And we got to allow people to grow on their own pace and allow people to make mistakes and realize on their own. So, you know, Sunsteam has talked about this many times. Like, you know, don't force people to do anything. Don't hold people back. Allow people room to make mistakes and grow. Allow, you know, have good time, have good discussion with each other too. And I think the growth model should be very long-term and not short-term. That in the end, it's better to have people be saved in the end than making sure they're perfect right now and then losing them in the future, right? So, you know, like, I'll tell you this, like, we were joking around and stuff, but one thing we were joking around about was, you know, one, one thing that we talked about how much we were, when you think back at it, how embarrassing things were is... We tell, we, you know, like, oh, we don't, we don't, you know, we're not a cult. But then sometimes our actions are like a cult, kind of. You know, don't wear black, but you don't drink soda, don't eat ramen, don't drink coffee. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't go here. You can't, you know. Now, are these rules bad? They're not bad rules. It's for our health. It's for, you know, for our health, our safety, whether it's mental, spiritual, physical, right? But it becomes cultish when you try to make people do it or create a culture where people are shamed or looked down upon for doing them and then you know people start feeling judged right the culture we create inside a church should be that of love and acceptance that even though i make mistakes you are loved and yes some mistakes are bad and wrong but we have to repent so we help people to repent through love and embrace people when they do repent we need to make sure that people feel like the church is such a great place to be where the God of love actually resides, right? And, you know, it should be a place where you want to bring your friends and it should be a place where you can truly feel God's love, not a place where you just go for service and then leave, right? So, yeah, it, it was a very, very uh, good conversation we had. And, uh, yeah, I hope it kind of uh, stimulates some of your thoughts and and you know, it can make you think a little bit more deeply uh, also, too. Yeah. Uh, just to let you guys know, there's a new poll coming out. Uh, it should be out right now. Is uh, what does your church need right now? That's the poll question. And we have four different things. Uh, programs or activities, direction or guidance, education, or community, or other. Right? You can choose something else like that. So go ahead and write that there. We'd love to hear what you guys think that you personally think your church needs. Okay, And also, just to let you know, on Saturday, another episode, episode number 11 of Love and Life comes out again uh, on Saturday. And the title is about providence and politics. How involved should we get? So I'm looking forward to this one, too, because I, I understand in America it's huge right now, right? Either way. So there it is, guys. That is uh, segment number one for today. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you have any questions or anything or comments, leave it uh, in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you guys, too. Uh, which means before we get into Q&A Thursday, let's get into the first music break of the day.
right, so let's get into today's Q&A Thursday, and we have two questions for today. So let's get into them right now. So uh, first question was a quite interesting one because it has to do with a, a character in the Bible named Simon of Cyrene, and uh, he was the one that carried the cross for Jesus. And uh, a member asked the question is, oh, he's in the Bible, so he must be important. So why was he? Why is he considered so important? Important? Has Sunseem said anything about him? So the first thing is, I myself, in my 26 years in this history, have have not heard about Sunseem talk about Simon of Cyrene, right? I, I, or at least not in, in depth. So I, I think there's a couple questions that need to be answered. And the first question I think is uh, the first question is going to be about if someone does come out in the Bible, does that mean they're important? Okay, and I would say that the f just the fact that they are in the Bible, they must have done something significant, right? It may not be significant in terms of history, like they may not be a significant figure, but uh, I would say they we would have to have done something significant, right? So if I were to kind of like, like give some examples, like look at the thief on the cross. He's not a significant figure in God's history, However, he did something significant by standing up for Jesus on the cross, and then he was taken up to paradise, right? He shows up only once, that's it. Does that mean he's a significant figure like Peter or Paul? No. He did do something significant, right? And, you know, he crossed paths with Jesus, and he did a significant action by being on Jesus' side, knowing that he was wrong and that Jesus was innocent, okay? Uh, the rich man. What about the rich man? The rich man that couldn't sell everything and follow Jesus. Did he, was he a significant figure? No, but he did a significant action. Unfortunately, it was a bad action, but it's something that we have to recognize, right? So he's not a significant figure, but he made a significantly bad action, and uh, he could not follow Jesus when he was told to follow right? Achan was another one. Uh, I think the time of Moses, or was it the time of Joshua, where uh, he was not a significant figure, but he did a significantly bad action, right? So just the, facts, just the fact that they show up in the Bible doesn't actually mean they are a significant figure, but they most likely did some type of significant action, right? So if, you know, if I were to answer the question of who is this Simon of Serene, okay? So who, what's he famous for? Well, exactly what he's in the Bible for, uh, carrying Jesus' cross. But there's nothing much about Simon other than that. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all just say that he carried the cross. In the three Gospels, just says Simon of Cyrene carried the cross. And the only information we have is he's from Cyrene and that his children are Alexander and Rufus. That's it. And we can also say that... Uh, you know, just like many other thousands of Jews, Simon and his family were in Jerusalem to celebrate Passover during the most monumental week in human history, the days leading up to the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, right? So nobody, uh, including Simon, understood the immensity of that week, right? When it comes to what it meant in all of history, and uh, Simon didn't know that he would become part of the supporting cast in this in this like this drama this uh, heavenly drama that fulfilled Old Testament prophecy he had no idea so you know and, and what they have to realize is uh, during the time from Malachi to, to Matthew that's 400 years of the intertestamental period during that time remember there was a lot of Jews that were displaced and they relocated to Cyrene right so they said about 100,000 people lived in Cyrene and the surrounding areas, including Simon and his family. Um, we don't know what actually came about, about of Simon. We don't know if he became a believer or not. But some scholars say that during Pentecost, when Peter preached, that many people from Cyrene were there listening. And uh, some say it included Simon, but there's no, nothing that tells us 100% that he was. So we don't know much. Be, you know, he just became part of history by doing something for the Lord. And if, if there was a realization for myself, 
I would say that th we're going to see these types of people in the Complete Testament Bible too. Like what types of people? Uh, in the Complete Testament Bible, I think we're going to see parts where many figures came out and they will be known only because they crossed paths with the one sent and they never knew it. And my realization from this is it's a good lesson to learn that many on the day of judgment will regret and remorse when they realized they crossed paths with the one sent but never knew him, right? They could have, they could have had their entire destiny change, but they never knew who was standing in front of them at that time. And I, I think one, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting. Listening to just just reading his story, which is like one verse in three of the Gospels, is like Simon carried the cross for Jesus, and we know that carrying the cross is very symbolic for either sacrificing or carrying a burden, right? Because you know Jesus is like carry your own cross kind of thing, right? And even though Simon didn't know Christ, he carried his cross. And if you think about it, whether you're a believer or not. Everyone carries the cross of their own life, their own sins, the own wrongs that they do, right? But I think the true matter is whether you know the Messiah or not, and that will determine whether carrying the burdens of your own sins becomes meaningful or not. And imagine this, the difference between him knowing who Jesus is and not knowing can you imagine how much more significant his actions would have been even to himself? Because think about this, us knowing this history, if you were there and someone said to you, hey, who wants to carry Jesus' cross? <coughs> because we know Jesus, we would be fighting to carry it. Like, oh, no, no, no I, want to, I want to carry it. I want to carry it. It's really different. It changes the meaning of how we live. So, you know, it, it just shows already the difference between knowing the one God says, the one God said, and not knowing. It's that significant and that incredible, right? Everyone's going to carry the cross of their own life, whether you believe or not. But knowing the one God sent is going to change how meaningful or uh, meaningless it is. All right, so that would be my answer for question number one. Second question has to do with the presidential election. Obviously, it's about the U.S. one. And they're asking is, do you think it's important? The U.S. presidential election is important? Or should we be more focused on providence and God allowing to lead it through prayer and such? And personally, I would say it's both. Both matter. Presidential election is for the people of that country, right? You, and, you know, just as Sunseem says, your leader determines where you go, that includes a leader of a country, right? So the people of that nation should be, should find it quite important because it's the responsibility of the people of that nation to find and choose the one that God wants, which means I would say the people of that country should be praying the most and researching the most. And I say researching, which means don't fall too deep into a rabbit hole. Right, don't fall too deep into it, right? But, you know, people in other countries, uh, should they be praying for it too? And I would say it depends on what country it is because some countries do affect others. Let me give you an example. Remember I was with the, the non-members who are business people in chi China and Taiwan? You know, they're the ones I just met. Uh, they came to visit Malaysia. They're worried about Trump going into office because he will put an emphasis on the American economy and put more tariffs on China which affects them, right? So it is a worry for them, and they should be praying and asking God too to find the right direction, and even more, a new direction for their own business if indeed there are more tariffs put on China. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it does affect other people. So I, it would really depend on what country it is too. And for those of you who are in the country, uh, I would say don't pray about it with zero knowledge. Remember, you only get as much as you put in. So you should know about who you're voting for and not just because everyone else is saying to vote for this person. You should have some knowledge and pray about it. And uh, like I said before, don't get too deep into the rabbit hole, which means... Um, oh, no, wait, wait. I'll tell you something first, though. I, actually, I had someone from Japan call me. Uh, I, saw, I saw their Instagram. And they were so moved by Trump. 
because Trump had a speech about, you know, being almost assassinated and talking about this proves that God exists and he's talking about that God is really real, right? And this Japanese member was so moved by Trump's speech because he talked about God's existence to the whole nation, right? And they're like, oh, that would never happen in Japan. I was so moved by it. So think about it. People from different countries will see different things. So it's quite interesting to see reactions from different countries too. But my point to you guys is, is don't go too deep into the rabbit hole. And how do, I, how do you know if you're too deep into it is when you start arguing with others and saying that one is greater or worse than the other. That's when you know that you've gone too deep. There's no need to go that deep. Our focus should be, obviously, number one is God in this history. And politics should be below your family. It should be like God, family, uh, friends and work, and then maybe politics after that, whatever it is, right? So, you know, I would say the only time you need to go deep into it is basically is if it's your job. If it's your job, it makes, you know, that's completely different. But in most cases, most people are not having their job in politics. And I would say just don't get so deep where you're fighting with people about it and getting emotional about it. I think, it's, I think that means you're way too deep into it, all right? So, yeah, those are the two questions for today's uh, Q&A Thursday. I hope you guys uh, really enjoyed this just as much as I do. If you have any more questions, please uh, send them to me. And, uh, yeah, let me, uh, before we get into today's Sermons in the Sky, let's get into the last music break of the day. Just like the rest, I walked in death. Not knowing the value of a single breath My pride was the biggest prize I had to protect Walking around high and mighty sticking out my chest Calling the shots like I know what's best Living how I like but I piled up a debt Outside's alive and aware the inside is dead And suddenly truth shine just like the dawn All things in life I knew zero percent Then I realized how far I was gone Wasn't right about anything, I was dead wrong Everything thought to be reality was a fallacy My life wasn't great, it was a tragedy All I knew was fake, I thought I'm losing my sanity All the while gazing at me was the trinity Looking with love, grace and mercy Patiently working consistently with me And eventually brought me to the new history I learned about someone new whom they used He worked with heaven and I learned his stories He is living proof that the Bible's words are true On the scene at 15, splitting every single scene God's words flow from him like he's a stream Preaching to the point that even his throat would bleed The most impressive person I have ever seen Him speaking the truth revealed everything to me Parables, holy son, soul, entity, spiritual universe Frankly, I don't think he's done He's taught me a thousand tons, too much for a single verse This is so amazing to the point I may burst I'm sure he's the one the Bible said would come Where else would this earth shattering word come from? Then I really realized he's the Messiah Sent to the world and raised humanity a level higher Didn't come to destroy but the word is the fire Amen to the very end my faith won't expire He's been going 79 years and hasn't tired Due to that condition the greatest blessing we've acquired Between him and eternity that time was finally captured I'm sure now that they got their bride nothing can match her Rapture, that's what we received Was evangelized, lectured, managed, now I believe Never knew this was something I could achieve Your blessings really flow endlessly I promise you, I'll never leave So I'll stay with you, to the death of me With you I've fulfilled my destiny Now I'll reboot, give you the best of me Offering my youth, running even faster For me and so many, you're not just a pastor You're the shepherd over all these pastures King of kings, lord of lords, that's for sure We're a perfect match, a hand and a glove The atmosphere in the air is full of love Came from above to hold the banquet So I'll GGG eternally for 316 Just cause I was swept into the net of the word Heard and learned doesn't mean it's over yet I really need to look at myself and reflect Line up against God's perfect law and check All my flaws need to be resolved Be bold to slanderers when I try to call Like him I'm thankful for tribulations Cause I didn't fall with the rapture I'm standing tall The love they give is truly priceless If I'm not with the Lord life enters crisis Without him I'm a ship that's wrecked to pieces So I'll always eat the word 
boxeresis Stick to him, red blood cell and rhesus I praise God for sending sun to him and Jesus He had a plan for them before they were a fetus To reveal to the world heaven's deep secrets With his name bring the pain, breaking Satan's noses With the Lord's condition, let's show him a comatosis While looking at heaven, never losing focus Conversing in our thoughts every single moment then our spirits of rapture will never be stolen If you only see strife, come see what peace is If you want to know heaven, come and see this If life were an essay, this is the thesis Rapture, that's what we received Was evangelized, lectured, managed, now I believe Never knew this was something I could achieve Your blessings really flow endlessly I promise you, I'll never leave So I'll stay with you to the death of me With you I've fulfilled my destiny Now I'll reboot, give you the best of me Offering my youth, running even faster For me and so many, you're not just a pastor You're the shepherd over all these pastures King of kings, lord of lords, that's for sure We're a perfect match, a hand and a glove The atmosphere in the air is full of love Came from above to hold the banquet So I'll GGG eternally for 316 Remember this wasn't given for free So always hear the word and do good deeds Praising those that saved us is an amazing thing And live with them in love, First John 3.18 Be like him, always run on God's team If you live like him, you'll surely succeed Believe him absolutely and gotta let you pass If you want the greatest salvation, walk this only path Okay, so let's get into our final segment of the day. And as you can tell from the sound uh, now, it's uh, I'm back home and I'm recording this last segment. Um, today's going to be a little bit different because um, I am home very, very, very late. And if I don't get this edited and ready, I do know that uh, it's going to, I might not even get this um, this video up on YouTube in time. So uh, what I am going to do right now is I wanted to share with you um, a realization from a campus member. Okay. And I thought this was really, really profound and something that I think people realize very, very late. You know, there's something there's, you know, in life, there's things that we know, but then there's the things that we realize. And uh, this person's very intelligent. And uh, sometimes sees things in too, in, in too smart or too intelligent of a way that sometimes it makes no sense to them, right? But let me uh, read to you this text. And I, I thought it was very inspiring. And uh, what they wrote was this. Uh, Pastor Sky, I need to ask you something. As we learn the words, we should develop the perspective of God, discerning everything in the world. While standing strong in providence teaching, we also need to be open-minded to learn about things outside providence and accept all types of people and opinions. To be able to discern well and not to be taken away, we need to have a solid truth foundation. But as we have this standard rule or this truth in our mind, Sometimes we tend to perceive and conclude things and people by this standard, the standard of truth. The words are perfect, but the world, the, hu the world, human beings, and ourselves, we are imperfect. We should strive for perfection at the same time be very clear that nothing is perfect in the world. So we need to have empathy towards people and gain more life experiences. Is this right? And I, for me, because uh, I've been a, a full-time leader all my life, I think that's one of the things I realized maybe a little bit late uh, is understanding that we are trying to be perfect, but knowing that we're not going to be perfect right now. We're on our way and we'll never reach that level of perfection that we perceive as perfection, but we always have to re-remind ourselves that it's about what God's thinking of per uh, uh, perception really is. And this person's 24 and they're like, what? You think I realized early? I, I'm already 24. I think it's late. And I'm like, well, I, I think the reason why I say it's early because... For myself, and uh, I think for some people who have just been full-time all their lives, uh, it's one of the things that Sunseam said in the past is 
when you look at people who are full-time, people who are stars and stuff like that, they're basically what Sunseem calls the special forces. And what Sunseem says is special forces go through different types of training. But the thing that he adds is only special forces go, goes through that training, but you cannot put that same standard on everyone else to be just like others who are in special forces. And uh, I think it's something where uh, sometimes our expectations or how we expect things to be and how perfect we're trying to be, uh, we put these expectations on the people we lead on newcomers, on uh, people in our departments or up, you know, we think about our leaders in that way too. And, you know, I think most, um, the biggest part I probably would say is the pressure that also comes from ourselves, right? And I, I think it's something where ultimately when we realize that as long as we're trying and as long as we're putting in effort, we're going to get better. That's a guaranteed as long as we put effort in, as long as we try. But I do not see God and the Holy Spirit looking down upon us and saying, these guys are pathetic. How can they not be perfect right now? No, we strive for it. We push ourselves towards it. And I would say uh, the best rule of thumb is have the rules for yourself are going to be much stronger than the rules for other people. Why? Because we know ourselves. We know what we went through, but we don't know anything really about other people. So I hope that we can uh, really have that mentality uh, where we treat people according to their level and not to the standard of God like or perfection. We need to all be going for the same goal of perfection, but also recognizing that everyone is starting at different levels and everyone is going at different speeds. So I, I hope that uh, we can really have that. Uh, I, I was just really inspired by this. Of course, you know, I don't really have enough time to do the sermons in the sky today uh, as uh, I'm going to be uh, uploading and this is going to be going up soon. Uh, on YouTube anyways, but I hope that uh, that text message and that realization that this member had, this campus member had, uh, was really inspiring and it helps you to think more deeply too about ourselves and the way we see each other and our leaders too. All right. So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's final segment. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I hope you guys have an amazing and awesome Thursday and we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. <laughs> It's the morning star drive 117.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like this I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star drive, you know I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like this